All right, hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about God as giver, but we're talking about faith, and we're talking about how faith works. It's not enough to know that you have faith. It's not enough to know what faith is. You have to know how and why it works. Because when you know how and why anything works, not only do you develop greater faith in it, but you now begin to master it. You now begin to own it. It becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of your expression and your reaction when satanic action is brought against you. And all our lives, guess what we got to deal with? Satanic attacks coming against us. And if, and if we don't resist those attacks, guess what happens? Sometimes those attacks can get painful depending upon what the attack is. So I want you real quick to go with me to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Okay, we're going to do some reading. I need you all to be patient here because we're going to do some reading. Now, this is vitally important. This is so key. Watch this here. I'm going to start at verse 12. When you all get there, just say amen. I'll take that as a time to go. All right, watch this here. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, talking about Jesus. How many know Jesus gets hungry? Because he was 100% God, but he was 100% man. The hypostatic union, that's a big theological term, meaning God in the flesh. All right, so watch this here. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Look at your neighbor and say, nothing but leaves. Hey, that's not you. You know, no, 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 no. You are not that kind of Christian. You are not that kind of being, nothing but leaves. All I got is leaves on. No, no, you got some fruit growing. All right, I got that one. That's my, and amen is my, that amen says I got it. That's my, that's my cue to move on. Look at this here. And Jesus answered, okay, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said, whoa, 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 answered and said unto that, what does that imply? Does that imply that Jesus was having a conversation with that fig tree? And now we got to deal with this here. It was not the time of leaves yet. It wasn't time for figs yet. But Jesus is having some kind of conversation, which is way above my thinking grade. But he's having some kind of conversation with this fig tree. And somehow the fig tree did not win in this argument. Now that lets me know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a fig tree expert. But Jay, for some reason, that fig was manifesting some symptoms Look to your neighbor and say, symptoms. Some symptoms of having figs on it. And Jesus went over there looking for what? Figs. Why? Because he hungry. And when, all right, y'all yeah, strap in now, strap in. I'm not going to just pick on y'all. But Jesus is looking at believers, and he hungry. <laughs> He ain't looking for just figs. He's looking for the fruit of the spirit. That's over there in Galatians chapter 5. He's looking for some fruit. <laughs> all right. All analogies break down somewhere. This one breaks right here. All right. We're going on to something else. So he's looking for figs. Finds none. Right. Look at this here. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Are y'all hearing, hearing what the Holy Ghost is trying to say? What did Jesus do to the fig tree? Who said that? He, who said that? Cursed it. Give me another word for cursed it. He killed it. Yeah, he rebuked it. He killed it. He said, nobody is going to eat fruit from you hereafter forever. Now, I'm not going to get into why Jesus did that when they said it wasn't the season for figs. I am not going to deal with this conversation that Jesus was having with this fig tree, and the fig tree lost the conversation because, or the fig tree was talking back, and Jesus had to just step it up one level and say, nobody's eating from you hereafter forever. Pay attention to that. Look to your neighbor and say, that's how you command something. That's how you rebuke something. That's how you resist something. Look at this here. And the disciples heard it. Now, the, the real issue in coming to church is are you hearing what God is saying and promising through the word? 
because we're here on different levels. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there. Verse 15, y'all there? Y'all still with me? Y'all still connected? You, you, still, you still connected? All right. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying to them, is it not written, my house, whose house? Whose house? Whose house? Whose house you in right now? Whose house? Whose house? Now, you know, if you're doing something crazy, God might flip your table. All right, now I'm just choked. Y'all calm down. Oh, question. Is this event taking place before he cursed the fig tree or after? Who said after? Somebody, some, some, somebody help, help me real, for, thir, for, for, for three seconds. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I can't hear nobody. I'm all by myself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't hear no bass. I don't hear no bass in the room. I hear a lot of alto and soprano. Where the, where the bass brothers at? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come on, help me. Say something. Let me hear you. Let God hear you. Y'all, y'all tough crowd today. Y'all tough crowd today. I just want to thank my brother right here. We was up at Central the other day, and he came on out. God bless you, bro. Gave his life to the Lord right there in front of everybody. We up there in the middle of the courtyard. Let me give you some love, bro. Let me give you some love. My man, that's some strength right there. All right. So watch this here. So it is safe to say that all of this that Jesus did in the temple was after. Right? Now, this is important. Pay attention now. Do not disconnect. All right, well, look at this here. And he would not suffer, verse 16, would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple, and he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Was Jesus being mean here? Was he being mean? Was he being insensitive? Was he condemning? Was he judging? He's just correcting. He's making an observation that's based in truth. He's making an observation that's based in fact. And what we learn from this, our takeaway from this here, is Jesus was busying himself after he cursed that fig tree. Y'all got to stick with that because this is going to be important. I'm going to circle back to that in just a minute. Look at this here. He says, you have made it a den of what? Thieves. We are not doing that in the house of God. Come on, say amen. We are not going to do that in the house of God. Why? Because we have a choice. Come on, somebody. We have a choice. And through this, we know that God addresses certain things, right? Can y'all see this? Can y'all see this as an address from God? This is an address. And boy, you know, today's standards, Jesus was rough. But for Jesus, this was normal for him. Okay, look at this here. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. Now, the scribes and the chief priests, these are your religious people in the church. They didn't like it. He going to come up in here, flip tables, correct us, teach us, tell us this is the way my house, whose house? God said, this is how my house is to operate. Look at this here. But the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might what? Destroy. You do not want to be in this category. And Satan will do his best to get you here. Convince you. Deceive you, persuade you that what God is saying, it don't, it, it, it don't take all of that. Says who? We in the last of the last days. Church folks, not y'all, but church folks has either got to make a decision they're going to get stronger or they're going to get weaker. And the weaker and the stronger is not based on how many reps and push-ups you can do, how fast you can run. It's on how much you are connected to the known will of God. Now, you got to understand something. I do analogies based on sports, warfare in the military, and I do analogies based on what my experience is. Now, when you start talking to people about God, if you like crocheting, I guarantee you the Holy Ghost will give you some awesome crochet uh, analogies. Y'all with me? All right, so now watch this here. 
And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him. Because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. It is not good to be around people that fear you. I'm not talking respect now. I'm talking about they are deathly afraid of you because those are going to be the ones that will kill you. They just ain't figured out how to do it yet. So we want to be loving. And sometimes you have to tell people you're loving. When you come in looking like a warrior, <laughs> you come in there like, what's that? That's not for you. That's for Satan. What's that? That too is not for you. That's for Satan also. So in this day and age, we got to be more clear, more distinct, and we got to be able to explain what God is doing and the impact that God has had on our lives. Amen? So watch this here. First of all, okay, the, the scribes and the Pharisees couldn't kill Jesus. Did the scribes and the Pharisees kill Jesus? No. No. Then who killed Jesus? No one. You say, they did kill Jesus. No, they didn't. Let's get spiritual here. Jesus did what with his life? Gave up his life. He let them do what was necessary to do. They thought they killed him, but God says, no, nah, y'all stupid. I'm letting y'all have a little advantage. This was my plan all along. I gave up my life. That supersedes what you do in the natural. Can y'all get that? This is going to be very important now for when we go on to the next step. And when he was come, he went out of the city. Say out of the city. Because, see, when you do work for God, you need to go and get some rest. You need to go and re-up your, your prayer life, your praise life. You, you need to go and charge yourself back up again. Look at this here. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the what? Fig tree. And it was what? Dried up where? See, now you got to get this here. You got to get this because if you don't get this here, you're going to be taken advantage of by Satan and all of his attacks. It was dried up where? In the branches. It was dried up in the branches too, but it dried up from. You see that word from in there? From. Why does it say from the root? Because that's what Jesus spoke to to kill it. And if you are going to have success over any attack that Satan is bringing against your life, you are going to have to kill it where? At the root. Oh, good God Almighty. Y'all didn't say amen, but those nods is a silent amen. <laughs> and when y'all say amen, you guys are agreeing with God. And when y'all say amen because you're agreeing with God's truth, man, the Holy Ghost just be like poking me. And I'm like, Ooh, my head start feeling like it's got tingles and goosebumps on it and all of that. And then I, gotta, I have another tribulation. I got to try to calm myself down until... We can bring y'all up to a level that zeal don't throw you off. All right, enough of that. Look at this here. And in the morning they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from its roots. And Peter, listen, calling to remembrance, saith unto them, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Or in other words, I like to put, the tree that you killed has withered away. Now, I got a question to ask y'all, and I'm going to see if y'all paying attention, because this is vitally important. Because if you can grab this principle, then you'll whoop Satan in every area that he shows up in your life, if you want to. Did Jesus curse the fig tree before going to the temple and cleaning up, or after? Before. So what was all of that cleaning up in the temple? Jesus was, now he didn't need this, but you and I going to need this. After we curse something that we can recognize that it's an attack from the devil or it's something that the devil is trying to hinder, you got to get busy for God. Until when? Until you come back and see that thing cursed where? At its roots. So we got to get some things. We got to get some understanding. People need to know why. So look at this here. And Jesus answering saith unto them, what did that say? Somebody help me. I don't want y'all to think I'm lying. Have what? Have who? When? I didn't say <laughs> See, this is proof. Y'all have to be listening to me. Now I get it. Because I said when. 
And y'all, okay. See, now y'all wonder why I got to keep repeating stuff. And y'all be getting angry. You going to say it again? Well, I'm going to say it until you intelligently hear it. I ain't mad at nobody. <laughs> Watch this here. Have faith in God. When? Who, who said that? I love it. Now, you got to hear. You got to listen. You got to hear what God is saying in the word. You got to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. And don't be scared of it. So watch what Jesus says. And Jesus answered and said, unto him, have faith in God or have the faith of God. Look at this here. Verse 23, this is powerful. For verily I say unto you, who's talking? Jesus is talking. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, look to your neighbor and say, he's talking about me right now. All right, because whosoever is me. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, big mountain, right over there, great big one. Be thou removed. What is going on here? Did he pull out dynamite? Did he pull out a sledgehammer? Did he pull out a pick and an axe? No, what did he do? He just started speaking. He's, he's teaching right now. He's showing how to defeat anything that stands in your way from achieving from getting, from pursuing the promise of God. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, listen, here comes the command, be thou removed. Does that sound like a command? And cast into the sea. Does that sound like commands? And shall not doubt in his heart. Does that sound like instruction? Does that sound like he's trying to make them aware of how the formula works? And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Listen. What's it say there? Come on now. He shall what? He shall who? Tomorrow. Ten years from now. You really? You going to go ahead of me? I love it. She went all the way ahead of me. She said, now. Now. He shall have, she shall have whatsoever they what? Whatever they what? What? Oh, why y'all trying to act all shy now? Say it! Hey, what are you saying about your situation? What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about your current circumstances and the condition that it's in? Are you in agreement with the attack of the devil? Or are you resisting it and opposing it and commanding it in the name of Jesus? Put it out. I'm trying to help you by the Holy Ghost. See, when, see, because watch this here. For a long time, I was out of agreement with God's promises. Because I would only speak what I was saying. I mean, I was, yeah, I was speaking what I was saying. I was only speaking what I was experiencing. I was only speaking what I was feeling. I wasn't taught to speak what God had promised. And because I wasn't taught to speak what God had promised, what I was saying was in agreement with Satan's attack. And so long as I was in agreement with Satan's attack, it took longer for my recovery to take place. The Holy Ghost just said, y'all ready right now. Y'all ready? All right. Now look here. What I'm about to do to you is for the glory of God. I don't get no attitude. Stop growing on me. You know, I don't play that. Y'all know what this is? This is a plant. And it is now my helper. God's helper. All right, I need a volunteer, male or female. Come on. I, listen, pregnant and all, I come up this time. I'm going, Lord, I'm here to help. Look, I need some blessings to manifest. I need you to hold this. You can hold it with two hands. I ain't going to cut you. All right. Any of you that know anything about plant life, what does it take to grow a plant? Water, food, what else? Soil, what else? <laughs> Did you say sun? Yes. Now, you can take away two or three of those things, and the plant will still grow so long as it's in soil. And long as it gets water, it'll still grow. It'll still be alive. 
Now, the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 that we have been, listen, born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God. Now, what does the word do? What does God's word do in anything? It produces life. It produces victory. But you got to stay connected to that word just like this plant is connected to the dirt and the water that I gave it. I mean, you know, every time you hear the word God, God is watering your life. Because you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you're connected to the soil of God. But you got to know that when God gives you a little sunshine, you okay, do you need a break? All right. When God gives you some sunshine, when God gives you the word of God, you're hearing the word. And that sunshine is like, like praise and worship. Okay. Y'all getting it? So your praise and worship is like, 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 like the sunshine. The word of God is like the water. And your connection with Jesus Christ, your faith in Jesus Christ is the soil. And all your life, Satan's trying to get you disconnected. Now, I'm going to flip this a little bit, okay, just a little bit. So long as you're connected, you're growing. But it really comes down to what rate are you growing, and that depends on how much praise and worship, sunshine you're getting, how much water you're getting, the word of God, sermons you're hearing. And water is different. Plants are resilient. You don't want to put certain types of water in your plant. I'm going to leave it there. Is that alive? Looks pretty healthy, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, in the natural, I talk to it. Would y'all like to know how I talk to my plants? I talk to them. I love them. I say, oh, you guys are doing good. Here, take this water. All right, I need you to grow more than you're growing. Then I clip them back every now and then. This one's ready to be clipped back. All of them actually are ready to be clipped back. And then I tell them, I said, now, look, you need to grow. And I tell them, I said, if you don't grow, you got to go. No, no, wait a minute, y'all laughing. Well, what, do y'all think that's being mean? No. Do any of y'all got any plants? How many of y'all got more than 10 plants? You do? Is that work or is that not work? Watering these rascals? Yeah, but I'm talking about the work right now. The talking is easy. Is it work? You got to water. You got 10 plants? 10? Now you a plant. Now you for real. In my training studio, I got about 23 plants in there. And when I water them, that's a project. Then I got to go and pull dead leaves off, like this one right here, ready to go. Sorry, don't take this personal, but you know if I pull off this dead leaf, you're going to grow better. You need a break, baby. You sure? Okay. All right, so now, what do you do with the dead leaves? I throw them in a special place called the garbage. What do you think God's going to do with dead souls? He's going to throw them in a special place, too, called the lake of fire. And Christians, the only Christians that don't like that message, they looking like this instead of like this. And why are they looking like this? Now, this wasn't a part of the sermon. The Holy Ghost just said, drop this on y'all. Why are they looking like this? They didn't have a connection issue. They had a praise and a word of God knowledge issue. So now, is that plant alive? It's alive, right? Now, what Jesus did to the fig tree is he cursed it at its roots. He did worse than what I'm about to do, so don't think I'm being mean. Jesus went over. See this nice long one? I'm cutting this nice long one off. I ain't going to cut no little short one off. Cutting this nice long one. Look at this here. Okay. Thank you, baby. All right. Oh, these are going to get clipped anyhow, so I'm not committing plant murder. Don't go calling these people talking about, oh, cruelty to plants, cruelty. Because <laughs> you know how folks can get. Question, question. Y'all do understand what causes a plant to grow. What caused the first plant to grow? Let's see if y'all really on your Bible. The first plant. The which plant? What caused the first plant to grow. 
Come on, y'all. Oh, y'all getting good. Y'all, excuse me. Excuse me. Y'all getting good. I asked this to a person. They said, well, the roots. No. The roots didn't cause the first plant to grow. Now, you got to be specific because if you just say what causes plants to grow, if you're dealing with somebody that don't know Genesis, they will argue with you from sunup to sundown. So you got to take them to the where? Root. So what came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken. How many know that's been a debate for years? And they could have fixed that one by just going to Genesis. So plant life, every life started with God. And God released the life source into whatever is living. Now, y'all ready? I got a simple horticultural question to ask you. But before I ask you this question, what causes life in a plant? Dirt. Water and sunshine. Right? And what God said will happen. It's already in the seed of the plant. The seed of your victory is already ordained. The seed of God's promise is already ordained. It just needs your praise. It needs your prayer. And it needs your faith and expectation. And if you keep applying that, what God has promised will come to pass. You cannot mistake what you have to do between the time you pray and the time your physical reality changes. There's a lot of effort and actions that you have to do based on what you've chosen. Now, they, Juan, they ready? You think they're ready? Is this dead or alive? Feel it. Don't nobody answer. Feel it. That's not poison ivy. Feel it. Don't worry, bro. Touch it. Sis, get a finger full of that. Bro, get a finger full of that. Is it dead or alive? Who say dead? Who say alive? Okay. That's a cop out, man. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't understand nothing about growing no plants. Now nah, I'm gonna take Cub as an expert. Well, she got plants growing. They still alive. Huh? And what does that mean? Thank you. Now y'all starting to get it. When I cut this thing off from its source, this is clinically dead, but it has the symptoms of what? Mm, that felt good, did it? Oh, shook it now. It's got the symptoms of life, but clinically, in the eyes of God, this is what? It's dead. I leave that there. We come back next week. It's going to be dried up at its root. And that's what happens when you curse anything Satan's attacking you with. I said anything. But if you don't know that, if you don't know how it works and why it works, and if you don't get God into your situation operating God's formula the way God says to operate it, then you're going to create delays in your physical manifestation. How can I get life back into this thing? Put it in some water, put it in some dirt, give it some what? Sunshine. And guess what will happen? <laughs> All of a sudden, you throw this thing in some water, just leave it there. Please don't ask me to explain to you why it works. I only have a simple, simple answer for you. Because God said it. Where did God say it? He said it in Genesis. Obviously, you ain't read it. Obviously, you don't believe it. But when you start believing it, we don't care about the process until we have to actually engage it. Stick to some water. Leave it there in the process of time. This thing is going to sprout roots, and then you're going to put that in the dirt, and then it's going to do its natural, normal functionality. But right now, this thing is dead. So when Jesus cursed the fig tree at its roots, he did what to it? Killed it. 
He killed it. What did he do to the roots? Before he spoke to the roots, he spoke to the life-giving principle to that tree. He cursed it at its roots, and so powerful was Jesus' faith, so powerful was Jesus' words, that all the dirt, all the water, <laughs> all the sunshine could not stop what Jesus said to that tree. And what did Jesus do after he cursed the tree? See, some of y'all said, well, see, now you, if you're in the natural, you're like, well, it's in the water. It's in the dirt. It's getting sunshine. But there's only one thing that supersedes the laws that God set in motion. And who's that? God. Y'all yo, connecting now. So when God makes a promise, even if it makes no sense to the laws of nature, you are dealing with the God that created the laws of nature, and he can call an audible. He can change the play anytime he wants. There has to be a reason for it. Y'all know, ain't no way a virgin can have a baby. That's not going to happen. In all natural, physical, human experience, that's impossible. But when you get God to come in, and parents, listen, the school system is teaching your kids more about sexual relations than the church has ever taught kids. Am I right or wrong? Come on, am I right or wrong? Why y'all why y'all quiet on that? So I mentioned virgin, folks start. Listen, what do you think is the source of truth? God's word. And where are you going to hear God's word the majority of time? Where is the place where people are to hear God's truth? In the church. How can God cause a virgin to have a child? Because God is above the laws of nature. How many of y'all agree to that? And how many of you know God can change the laws of nature? He can supersede the laws of nature anytime he wants. Remember the guys in the boat? They're trying to get to the other side. Jesus comes walking on the water. I tried it. He said, did you walk? I walked into the water. I didn't walk on it. You say, why couldn't you? That's easy. My faith was not strong for that. I thought it was. <laughs> but wait a minute. Before you look at me and call me crazy, at least I stepped out on it. And for you to get to your next level, you got to have the promise of God's word, and then you got to put some actions to it. And if you don't do that, you're not doing the formula the way God said it's to be done. So now that we have established any attack of the devil coming against you, you got to first curse it where? At the root. Who is the root of your problems? Who's the root of your problems? And the church has been confused because Satan has lied and said, well, God put that on you to try to teach you a lesson. Are y'all getting anything out of this? All right. Because every time y'all, no, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say every time y'all amen, I'm going to start dancing. I'll be thin as a rail. Look at that. I have good, good cardio though, right? But watch this here. Anything that comes at your life in any area is an attack of Satan against your life. And when you understand how and why faith works, faith in God. Now, we're talking about the God that can make a virgin to have a baby. We're talking about a God that can open blinded eyes. We're talking about a God that can kick demons out of a host and give that person freedom. We're talking about God. Whose house is this? It's God's house. And what are we doing in God's house? 
learning the ways of God, learning the formulas of God. Hallelujah. Whoo, man, somebody's faith is getting stronger. Somebody's great faith is getting stronger. But you can have the strongest of faith, the greatest of faith, but until you pull the trigger and do something, until you step out and trust God. And what's the proof? Listen, now when I say this, Jay, I'm very well aware of your emotional response to this. It can be negative or positive. It can be rejectful or accepting. Y'all ready? Until you rebuke Satan, command Satan, and resist Satan, all the great faith you've developed is just developed great faith. It's not usable and it's not benefiting you one bit. Because you won't rebuke, you won't resist, you won't command. And the question is, why won't you when you have all the evidence of Jesus? And I can go through countless others that believe like Jesus that got the same results from God. Answers to prayer. And a lot of them superseded human law, human natural scientific abilities. Whew. Is this too strong for y'all? Because with all my heart, I tried to give this to y'all in the most humble and in the most delicate and compassionate way possible for me. And I know why right now you're looking at me like, Pastor, you need more prayer. That's what I do. Watch this. I'm just joking with you. <clears throat> so watch this here. When anything negative comes against you, the first thing you do to it is you say, in the name of Jesus. The minute you say, in the name of Jesus, guess what you have done? You have brought all of heaven to stand up next to you. All right, so gentlemen, I need you two guys. Could y'all both come and flank me left and right behind me? Satan comes attacking. I don't care what he attacks with. Soon as you say, in the name of Jesus, guess what? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, this is just an analogy. They stand up behind you. What's that mean? They ain't by themselves. Soon as you say, in the name of Jesus, you bring all of heaven's resources to your backing, to your defense, to your assistance. Look to your neighbor and say, God is my helper. Now, once you say in the name of Jesus, whatever Satan's attacking with, you speak to him and say, I curse you at your roots. Jesus said, no man shall eat fruit from you hereafter forever. You look at it and say, I curse you at your roots in the name of Jesus. You will not, you're talking to the thing, you will not go to full manifestation and dominate my life. Whose authority are you talking to and talking in? You're talking in Jesus' authority. You're talking in Jesus' character, Jesus' power. And who are you talking at? Who are you resisting? Whatever Satan brings into your life. Now listen, listen. I give you a gun, I give you bullets. I show you how to load the gun. Show you how to cock the chamber. Show you how to take the safety off. Can you stop an assailant at that point? So you got bullets, got a gun, know how to use it, safety's off, and assailant is coming at you. Does that mean you're going to kill it? No. Doesn't mean you're going to kill it. You can be fully equipped and that assailant whoop your tail. Until when? Until, until what? No, 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 bullets in the chase. You locked and low, ready to go, safety off. That's what it is when you come to church and hear the word. When you hear the word explained and broken down so simple, so plain, that you know what to do with it. And you can get to where you start practicing it. Thumbs get so strong, you can load the bullets without an automatic loader. 
But if you don't do what when that assailant comes at you? If you don't pull the trigger, that assailant will kick your tail with a loaded gun in your hand. And that's what Satan is doing to Christians. They know the scripture. They're learning how to praise. They're learning how to resist. They're learning how to command. They know how to, how to rebuke. But then when Satan come at them, they equipped to win. We equipped to win. But until you start rebuking, who's standing behind you? Who got your back? Y'all don't want to come at these guys. These cats will come at you back. You know why they will? Because they said they would. I'm coming to the place where I'm going to say, get him, Holy Ghost. And I don't even talk to that devil. He ain't listening. Get him, Holy Ghost. I done talked to your people and his people. Get them. They are ripe for judgment. That sounds mean, huh? Come on, you can say, that sounds mean. God don't do like that. You haven't read Corinthians. When you read the book of Corinthians, there was a young man. He had married his mother-in-law. Paul heard about it. Now, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the father died. I don't know if the mother just left him. But the son of the father married the mother, married his father's wife. And Paul said, what is wrong with you church folks? Y'all should be, that's disgusting, ain't it? <laughs> that's disgusting. Okay, can I get real? You want me to get real? That's like, Tally's married to LJ. Tally, this is just, a, just an analogy, but it'll make the point. That's like me dying or, or mommy divorcing me or whatever the case may be. I'm out the picture. That's like LJ leaving you and going to marry. Mommy, you kill him? That's God, that, that Holy Ghost. Now, this, hold on, y'all like, what? So this is what Paul said. This is New Testament now. So Paul says, what is wrong with you church folks? Why haven't y'all delivered that person? Why haven't y'all judged this? Situation? How come y'all ain't stopped this? How come ain't nobody speaking against this here? All right, I done heard about it. And if I heard about it, I'm way over here locked away. I know everybody else done heard about this craziness. So why haven't you guys got together, confronted this rascal, and told him to stop and told her to stop? It's what y'all doing is out of order. And y'all doing it in whose house? God's house. So Paul said, this is what I'm going to tell y'all what to do. I want y'all to have a meeting. You get the mother and the son who's now her husband. Get them all together. And rebuke them rascals. Now this is how you do it. He says, first of all, God going to be there. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit going to be there. I'm going to be there. I said, no, what, 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 how's you going to be there, Paul? He said, I'll be there. My spirit going to be there. Don't worry about how. You just need to know I'm going to be there. Y'all bring them together, and you confront them, and you command them to stop that nonsense. And then if they don't, listen, read it for yourself. Turn them over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh so that, who, who said, mm -hmm. who done read that? You read that before? It's in there. Turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Listen, here comes help. Y'all ought to be... No, y'all not going to get into it yet, but y'all might have to talk to somebody. Give them some help. Give them some hope. Turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that their spirit and soul. Maybe who? Girl, you all up in the book. Come get yourself. I can't kiss you. Come get yourself. So that their spirit and their soul might be saved. So there's hope for craziness. So long as you don't let Satan disconnect you. Did y'all get it? You're still connected. Them folks were still connected. Crazy. The... Yo, son, hold up. That's, that's your mother-in-law. I'm like, hold up. No, no, no. You, you, no. No. Y'all all out in the open. Y'all might be in leadership. No. Get these guys a big hit. Look. <laughs> Look at that. Look. Stand. Hey, y'all see that representation? That's how we're going to be when we go to our new church. That's how we have to be when we go to our new church. 
And I'll tell you why. Because it's a new day and age right now. Satan knows he's got a short time. I was listening to a documentary on the roots of gospel music. Whenever Satan wants to break people of faith, he not only kills them in many cases, but he does something else that's devastating. He burns down the church. You look in history. Whenever there was racial tension, racial violence, Satan's attack through people was, first thing, burn down the church. Break their spiritual connection if you can. And let me tell you something right now. We're getting ready to go into a new place. It's going to be nice. Pastor Jay, that place we took, real nice, huh? Took it to the two locations that we're looking at. If Satan could block those, because I believe we're going to have a choice between either one we want. But if he could, God's always got better. Look to your neighbor and say, God's always got better. But now, for you to be able to say that, you got to be what? You got to have faith in God. Satan's tactic was for people whose hope was in the building, whose hope was in the preacher, whose hope was in the things of God first, caused them to be sorrowful, some depressed, and whatever else. But when you're connected to God, Satan, I don't care what you tear up if you think I'm going to let you tear it up. Me and God, gentlemen, I don't want y'all to get back up there, but y'all still there? God is always with you because you're connected. This guy was happy. He was married, not just having a relationship. He was married to his mother-in-law. But he still went to heaven. <laughs> See, some of y'all were like, what? I took him out there and shot him. <laughs> That's why God ain't got you. <laughs> All right. God is helping you. Now, last time we were together. Hey, 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 hey. What you going to do the next time the devil attacks you? What's the first thing you're going to do? In the name of Jesus. Second thing you're going to do. You're going to curse that thing. You're going to address that thing according to the promise of God. Let's deal with sickness. The devil attacks you with sickness. Do you realize that the first time you start manifesting symptoms, spiritually, you're not sick? I know I got medical people up in here. You're not sick at that point. Spiritually, what are you? Under attack. First symptom, that's the first attack of the devil. That's where it starts physically manifesting. Oh, you was under attack a long time before you got the physical symptoms to manifest. All right. Watch this here. So you start experiencing symptoms, right? What's the first thing that most folks say? Well, who said that? Who said that? They said, I'm sick. Guess what you've done? Spiritually, you've authorized that attack to stay on your life. FedEx come bringing you a box? I don't care who sent it. My wife can send me a box from FedEx. If I catch that box at its delivery point and I say to that FedEx driver, take this away. Are you Edward Haynes? Yes, I am. This was sent by Jamie Haynes. Take it away. What's the FedEx driver going to do? What are you going to do? Now, most cases, because FedEx and the UPS, they don't play DHL either. They said, well, can you sign here saying that you reject this? Saying that you what? Say what? That you who? You got to reject that first symptom. We are talking spiritual things now. How did Jesus open the blinded eyes? Spoke to him and laid his hands on him. How come Jesus could do that? <laughs> Who was Jesus when it comes to faith? The author and finisher of our faith. Somebody tell me what book that's in. He is the author and the finisher of faith. 
begins with an H. Hebrews. Jesus was the author. In the, hey, when you authored it and finished it, you know everything about it. You know how it works. And we already established that the laws of God, the power of God, can supersede nature and anything that's going on in nature. Because of what? Great faith. That's what we're building. We're building great faith. Now, 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 until you get your faith, that great faith status, you that are being in under care of doctors, take your medicine. I'm going to use glasses. Because, you know, it works with anything. So if you wear glasses, you put them on, you see straight. You take them off, everything is going every which way, right? So some people have more faith in crushing and stopping on their glasses than they have in the healing power of God. You say, what do you mean by that? All right, so, Lisa, you, are those prescriptions or are those just cute glasses? Those are prescriptions, because you don't know nowadays. Some folk wearing glasses because it's cute to wear glasses. They can look studious, but those are prescriptions. So when you take those glasses off, right, everything kind of goes like, Ooh. right? Not exactly like that, but some, some version of that. So now, we, we lay hands on her in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch her eyes, heal her eyes. When the healing manifests, will she be able to look through those glasses and see things straight? No. So some people, they get prayed for, guess what they do? They break their glasses, boom, and they walk around like this here the rest of their life. And, and they're not humble. They can't say, oh, my face wasn't strong enough. Take me to the doctor. I need, I need to get my glasses back. No, they're not humble enough to do that. So know what they do? They stay in it. Oh, I'm believing God because I got great faith. And evidence proves. I'm telling right now, 24 hours of that, I, my faith ain't working. <laughs> to the level that I can get the, re, the change in results that I'm looking for. So now I got to say, well, I'm still, I'm still, that ain't great faith. It ain't strong faith. <laughs> it ain't weak faith. It ain't little faith. Is it no faith? No, it don't qualify for no faith because you did some kind of action. Ooh, somebody say amen. That's just facts, y'all. So now, watch this here. So watch this here. We lay hands on them, pray God to heal them. They got those glasses on, and they see in 2020 with the glasses on. Guess what? The prayer was heard by God, answered by God. Faith in what was prayed, faith in what God had promised, we released our faith, but the evidence proves what level of faith we're on. So when you get it instantaneously, I'm talking about a physical change. What level of faith is that? Come on, don't be scared to say it. Great faith. Great faith. See, when we point out, when I say we, I'm talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in me. And when you point out to people how faith works, we're not trying to make them feel bad whatever level of faith they're on. But what is the acid test of faith? Results. Acid test of faith and what kind of and what level of faith you have in whatever you're asking to do, asking God to do, depends on the level of that faith. And what is the difference between the levels of faith? It's all about how fast you get your physical change. Weak faith, take you a long time. You still got it. It's working. Don't quit. Don't give up. What should you do? Build that to the next level. You got little faith. Don't quit. Don't give up. You need to hear that word more so it builds up. Faith comes by who? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Satan's been clever. Nah, I don't feel like hearing it. I don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. That's his attack to try to keep you a midget when it comes to faith. But when your faith, when my faith reaches the level to that great faith status. Read your Bible. Everyone that operated in great faith got what? Immediate results. People that got strong faith, they got faster faith results, faster physical change than those that had weak, little, and no faith. Are y'all hearing that? Watch this. I'm not making no excuse. This is what the Bible teaches. I 
I've been cut twice in the hips. Each side. And I was believing God for a healing. Twice. I'm using me because I, wanted, I want y'all to see that I lived this too. I was bone on bone for two years. But I wasn't in like excruciating pain. Two years, bone on bone, both hips. But I golfed every day. I was using them hips. And I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff coming up out my swing. Compounding it. Slowing it down. Then I'm lifting weights every day, except on Sundays. And I'm believing God for a supernatural miracle. I'm believing God to heal these hips. But in the process, I was doing too many things to push off that healing, to keep it from manifesting. And I didn't want them to cut. I didn't want them to stick me with a needle. I said, my faith is strong enough. And then guess what happened? A day came where Eddie Haynes had to realize your faith is working, but you keep undoing it by your actions. And now I'm walking like this. It's not hurting, but I'm walking all like this. <laughs> but I'm still golfing, still lifting weights. I wore these hips out. This was not an attack from Satan from that standpoint.